Hi everyone, welcome to Zynerd's NEET PG 2022 and INISET 2022 information series. In our first video, uh, in as part of the series, we looked at uh, what a roster is, uh, why a roster is needed and how a roster is created based on the reservation policy. Uh, in the second part of the video, we looked at one of the methods of implementation based on a roster point, uh, uh, roster point allocation created, uh, uh, basically uh, where uh, seats are bucketed into different categories in the seat matrix and then allocation happens uh, from rank one and then rank two on a sequential basis. Uh, this is uh, followed, this was followed in, uh, this is usually followed in MCC. And uh, in this uh, video, we'll be looking at method two based on the same roster point uh, allocation. So basically it is the same 200 roster point we are going to take as an example, like in method one, but there are certain uh, admissions or appointments where a candidate based allotment is followed with no seat categorization. Seats are not categories, but candidates are called as per roster point. We This is us used in INISET, especially in JIPMAR now, and then possibly uh, the same model will also be implemented. In. AIMS uh, roster allocation once uh, the details are finalized uh, for uh, INISET July 2022. We look at how this is uh, this is uh, uh, this process entire process works. Uh, as far as the roster goes, it is the same roster that we looked at in the earlier one too. This is a 200 point roster which is used for central appointments. This does not have PH here. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, the seats are rostered for uh, persons with disabilities. We'll take that uh, at a later point in time when we look at the JIPMA scenario in part four of the video. Now, what this roster would have is, is a is two hundred roster points. Basically, there are two hundred points as you can see here. There are two hundred roster points, and all these roster points have a category assigned against them. So, at the first roster point, an UR category candidate is entitled in this method. At, at the second roster point, an UR category candidate. Similarly, uh, at roster point four, an OBC category candidate is entitled for a seat in this particular method. So it is the same one. We look at how uh, the entire admission happens with the help of an example. So let's say I have two an institute, ABC Institute of Medical Sciences, which has uh, pediatric seats and general medicine seats. Uh, now, uh, what we said was there is no seat categorization. So the seat matrix will not carry any distinction of whether this belongs to OBC, SC, ST, EWS, etc. The seat matrix will just say ABC Institute of Medical Sciences, five pediatric seats in total. ABC Institute of Medical Sciences, 10 general medicine seats in total. So the categorization is not done in the seat matrix. So that is the first point that we need to remember as far as this method is concerned, which is used in any set two for JIPMER and possibly for AIMS. Candidates now are called as per roster point some way or the other then anyways the reservation policy has to be implemented so candidates are called as per roster point category not as per the rank order basically the allotment may not necessarily be as per rank order but would be as per roster point order that is when uh, basically the entitlement order where is the roster point order this is a roster point order which we said the first candidate to be called for would be an ur candidate the second would be an ur2 uh, another ur candidate and uh, so on till fourth candidate being an OBC candidate and so on uh, is how the candidates would be called for. Uh, I would, would, would like you to uh, take this uh, as a uh, basically an offline counseling where candidate is called one after the other. It is the same process that is followed in an online allotment too, where first candidate is allotted and then second candidate is allotted and so on. Except then this is not by rank. We'll look at how it is and that will give you a clear idea. So let us say this is, uh, uh, the uh, entire uh, allotment in terms of roster point. We already know that this is the uh, this is one to twenty five of the roster points. So we decide for the first fifteen candidates, this will be the candidate category that is called against each roster point. How did we derive that? We derived it from the category year mark against the roster point. We have taken only 15 candidates here, just as an example, because we have 15 seats as of now, it may be higher in case a candidate doesn't opt, but as of now, we'll assume that every candidate is going to opt for a seat. And therefore 15 candidates are uh, called one by one. And the first candidate who is called will be an UR candidate. Second candidate will be an UR candidate. Third will be UR and fourth will be an OBC candidate. Note that we are not talking ranks here. We are talking candidates as per category. The distinction will come to in the next slide onwards. So the starting st seat matrix will have general medicine 10 and pediatrics 5 seats. We mentioned that there were 10 general medicine seats and 5 pediatric seats. So the starting one will be with all the seats being available. 
we have a merit list available here you can have a look at this merit list which is available here i'll just uh, minimize the video so that you are able to see uh, the entire merit list through the entire uh, discussion now this is the merit list the merit list has the first candidate who belongs to ur category the candidate belongs to ur category so uh, and similarly second candidate belongs to obc category third candidate belongs to ur and so on fifth candidate his rank is 5 let's take an example of inset rank is 5 but is not registering for the mock round or round one let's say so this candidate is not attending similarly you have all the candidates as per their category defined here in the merit list 11th category it is something so a candidate who registered but does not fill choices so we'll go one by one who is the first candidate to be called as per the roster we already have listed this down where did we get this from from the roster so this is listed down first candidate to be called is an ur candidate who is the first ur candidate rank 1 is itself the first ur candidate so he has an option to opt for it let's say rank 1 was some other candidate ews even then an ews candidate is eligible for a new ur roster point and therefore that candidate would have been called we'll come to that at a later point later. but as of now the first candidate is an ur candidate he is called he or she is called for and let's say the candidate chooses general medicine the balance seats would be nine general medicine seats one is uh, allotted and five pediatric seats now one you the first candidate has already been allotted he is out of the process now of allotment and it moves on to the second candidate note that it is not the second rank candidate it is moves on to the second candidate now the second candidate uh, is a you are rostered candidate so you will uh, look at who is the uh, person who is eligible for you are from among the entire list who is the first person an obc candidate is obc candidate is eligible for an ur seat and therefore because obc is eligible for both obc and ur seats therefore this rank 2 obc is assigned against this ur roster point and let's say the candidate chooses general medicine there is one general medicine seat uh, which is allotted and uh, the balance seats come down to 8 now who is the third candidate again an ur candidate any candidate is eligible for ur seats therefore obviously the third uh, ranked candidate is allotted Uh, is is be allotted and then let's say the candidate chooses a pediatric seat a pediatric seat is allotted and the number of pediatric seats come down to four the first three ranks because they are you are irrespective of the category of the candidate there is an allotment and all three ranks are allotted now now the fourth is where we get the we have the first roster point for a non you are category which is an obc category who is the candidate who is to be called for because it is a roster for a candidate whose category is obc the first obc candidate has to be called for who is the first obc candidate who is eligible obc rank rank 6 is the first obc candidate who is to be called for rank 4 is higher but is an ews candidate and it is not his roster point here therefore rank 6 obc will be called for and rank 6 obc chooses general medicine then one general medicine seat is allotted here even though you have rank 4 ews here note that there is no there might be a feeling that an ews candidate is missing out something it is not you still have as per roster ews roster points and that candidate may be allotted and there may not be a major difference between the earlier allotment uh, earlier ones we discussed in uh, mcc allotment and this allotment too. sixth obc is allotted we said and now we come to the fifth candidate who is an ur uh, uh, which is a roster position uh, for a ur candidate category ews is eligible for ur therefore ews gets an option uh, this candidate gets an option and under this ur roster point an ews candidate is allotted a pediatric seat and there is one pediatric seat which is less now who are the candidates who have been allotted 1 2 3 4 and 6 have been allotted the next candidate of category option is an, again an ur candidate rank number 5 is not attending so who is the next eligible ur candidate rank 7 is the ur candidate now rank 7 is assigned against this category let's say he opts for a general medicine seat and one general medicine seat is reduced and it comes down to 6 and then we move on to the next category now here you will get a clear distinction at rank 7 it is an sc roster point now what do we do like we did for obc earlier here who is the first sc candidate who is eligible for this seat rank 12 is the first sc candidate so rank 12 gets an option and rank 12 is allotted this seat whatever his preference is he is allotted a general medicine seat and general medicine seats come down to 5 now so note that the ranks 12 is allotted ahead of 8 9 10 and there are every seat that is available does not have a category here repeating the seats are available under total overall category there is no categorization of seats but the candidates are called for as per ranks 
next one is an obc candidate so you can you yourself can look at which one is the next obc candidate who is uh, available uh, and ur candidate is not eligible ews is not eligible ews is not eligible and therefore we come down here to the rank 14 who is an obc candidate and this obc candidate will be the next one to be uh, allotted let's say he takes a genmet seat and he gets genmet another uh, category which is uh, and a seat is reduced in the genmet and that remains as the balance for the next candidate nine being ur allotment you obviously look at the topmost candidate who is still unallotted those allotted are in red so you look at the topmost candidate who is still unallotted rank 8 is still unallotted he gets an option if he chooses general medicine then rank 8 is allotted general medicine ews next one is ews rank uh, roster point 10 is ews so you go to the first ews available candidate it happens in this uh, situation that the, that candidate is the first higher ranked candidate as well so nine ews is the one eligible for the seat and the candidate let's say takes pediatrics and therefore one pediatric seat is reduced we'll just quickly run through the rest uh, the next ur candidate uh, who's available you will look at all the options ews is eligible for ur therefore you uh, allot that to an rank 10 which is who's ews who has taken under roster point ur and then one general medicine seat gets reduced the next option is an obc candidate you don't see any obc unallotted candidates here you only see them under uh, see the next candidate to be rank 17 so rank 17 is eligible and whatever option he selects is allotted oh, what is the next one the next one is ur so obviously the first ur candidate 11 did not fill choices and so 13 is the next candidate who is to be allotted rank 13 gets allotted this ur seat uh, who is an ur candidate this time and one pediatric seat is allotted and we come to an st candidate uh, this is an for a slot uh, roster point 14 is an st slot who is to be allotted the first st candidate is to be allotted so you look at the entire rank list till whatever uh, rank you reach uh, till you find the first st candidate who is yet to be allotted the first st candidate is at rank 28 so rank 28 is allotted this seat and a last uh, one there's only one seat left uh, which is a pediatric seat so you move on to the next uh, Roster point SC. There's the first SC candidate who is uh, yet to be allotted. You have a look at the entire list. Uh, you know that 30 is the first SC candidate who's yet to be allotted in the entire list. And so rank 30 is allotted. Uh, uh, general medicine and uh, let's say rank 30 had chosen general medicine. There are no general medicine seats available here. You can see. And rank 20 has uh, pediatrics options. There is one pediatric seat available here. Note that irrespective of what, there's no category. So basically SC can, opt, uh, there is not necessity that it should be under SC category. The candidate gets a pediatric seat, which is available. And for this, for his, roast, his or her roster point and then gets allotted. So this is how this entire thing works. So we've got 15 seat allotments. You will see that 15 of them have been allotted here, but you will see that this is as per roster point category. Therefore, certain, certain candidates above these particular ranks have not been allotted. This is exactly the same that will also happen. Not same, but similar that will also happen when you categorize seats. Let's say 15 has been had been split into UR, EWS, OBC, etc. In the earlier model, even then a similar allotment might have happened. But which one is better? Which one will give you a favorable, uh, uh, which one is better for you in terms of your rank? You will not be able to decide at all. There is no generic answer for this. No, but don't go with anyone saying Inisets aims roster is uh, worse and the earlier um, bucketing method, uh, method one was better. Don't go by that. It purely depends upon your rank. Second, it purely depends upon the candidate categories above you. And it also depends upon how many seats are available in your choice list. Basically, how many seats were available and what would have happened if the other thing, uh, other model was implemented. Don't go by any generic responses. They do not, if somebody is giving you a generic response saying that roster implementation results in lesser chances or higher chances, then don't go by that. But if somebody says that because institutional quota is implemented, there is a percentage of seats that go to institutional quota under INISET uh, in uh, AIMS, then you have an impact. That is uh, correct. But in terms of implementation model between roster method and the earlier method, there may or may not be an advantage depending upon the factors that we discussed. So uh, this is how the roster implementation happens. Thank you a lot for watching. In case this was interesting or it would be helpful for anybody else, please do uh, ask them to subscribe to our channel or share this video with them. 
uh, we have complete information, uh, complete information uh, accurately and uh, uh, whatever is required for your entire counseling in Zyner. We are both initiate and need PG information. Please have a look at the portal and then take a decision on subscription. Then all the Telegram groups that are available are also there in the YouTube in the description in this uh, video. Please have a look at them. The next video that we will come up with is on Jipmer, uh, an exact scenario of with Jipmer's uh, 200 point roster. That will give you an idea of exactly how it works as far as allotment is concerned. Thank you a lot.